Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Let's talk today about perfectionism. That we talk a lot on this channel about complex trauma or the unworthiness wound or the lack mentality, feeling not enough those wounds that hide in our subconscious and in our blind spots that are very difficult to overcome, especially when we are a seeker, an aspiring entrepreneur, a, driv a purpose-driven entrepreneur, trying to step into our purpose and make a difference in the world to do something that matters. And we can't quite figure out what it is that's holding us back. But before we jump in today, I want to remind you that the New Earth Construction team is open. If you are a purpose-driven entrepreneur, a seeker who wants to make a difference in the world but can't quite make that happen, this is the place to be. Aside from the videos here, we get together weekly. We do something called brain spotting to remove these blocks. Um, I've also called it trauma spotting through source tapping because there is an energy healing element that is combined with the brain spotting to really move through these blocks. And I promise you, there is nothing like it. I have tried everything in the industry. If you can't quite seem to get out of your own way, this is the place to be to make that happen, to make that a reality, to finally remove the blocks, identify your purpose and manifest abundance through it. So the reason I wanted to talk about perfectionism and how this can show up for the seeker is because it can be very subversive. It can be very sneaky that many times if we feel guilt or shame or we feel, you know, that difficulty showing up, we fear the fear, we feel the fear of judgment that can be. Um, pretty well summarized under the complex trauma umbrella. But the sneaky part is when we show up in a high performance way, right? That it's not, first of all, I'll say the big T word, right? Trauma tends to turn people off. It, it tends to p get people to say, no, that's not me. I haven't experienced trauma. This is not for me. But really what we're talking about is also conditioning or programming. It can sometimes show up as the unworthiness wound or the feelings of not enoughness or the lack mentality, but it can also be disguised behind perfectionism. High achievers, high performers, those who seek to be um, uh, <laughs> validated in the eyes of others, it can seem socially acceptable or even commended to be that high achiever. But yet we push ourselves to exhaustion. There is um, a very subversive wound of unworthiness that drives this and we, we can't even see it. It's very much in our blind spot and it will show up as hypervigilance or the constant need to keep things under control. There is a restlessness and an anxiety, an inability to be present, to be still, that we often are people pleasing and over giving, maybe even rescuing the other, self-sacrificing ourselves just to be the good guy or the good girl. We deeply fear upsetting people. And of course, at the worst of it, we feel failure. So that can be, um, commonly characterized as appealing or desirable in our current culture, that people who are high achievers excel in business and do really well and, and can gain some respect. And yet at the same time as within, so without those people that climb the ladder with us or just before us can sense our sensitivity or our, um, our lack of self-confidence and they will go after that. And oftentimes we will find ourselves in situations where there's a power control, a power dynamic, a struggle for control in that environment. And what I've found is that very commonly that there is a, a connection between the striver or the seeker who is searching for something and also that perfectionism right? That it is part of the human condition. They say in psychology that humans are driven towards progress. And yes, some are more so than others, but many times it comes from an unhealthy place, a subconscious belief that we have to prove our value and worth. Many times I, I feel this shows up for people that I feel I see in my work that this shows up for people who did not feel safe or seen or heard as a child. And oftentimes their safety was questioned because of their inability to be seen or heard. 
that maybe you were the youngest child or maybe there was a child who was sick and you they got all the attention and you didn't or maybe it was that you were the most responsible one maybe the other child your other sibling was um you know always acting out getting in trouble and so they required a lot of attention but because you were the good kid they didn't need to give you as much attention and so that will create that desire to be seen and yet it is very fascinating how this this wound works because it's it's a tug of war right i want to be seen and validated yet i fear rejection and judgment and failure so i'm it's a push pull right uh, i put myself out there and then i pull myself back right that there is a, a yearning and a desire and a wanting towards self actualization or accomplishment or progress we think that we're pursuing happiness but when we look really deep we're trying to get away from something. We're trying to get out of a situation. We're trying to escape this feeling of not enoughness or lacking fulfillment. That we can perfect ourselves into a mundane life and then feel unfulfilled and unsatisfied. That we're trying to play both sides and we cannot find a middle ground. We can't rectify within ourselves what is it that I'm seeking? What is it that I'm running from? What is it that I'm running toward? It's an inquenchable thirst. And I believe this, not I believe, again, I see in my work, this shows up in many different ways for people. That we all have different labels and different names for the thing that we are seeking. Maybe it's happiness, maybe it's fulfillment, maybe it's wealth, maybe it's fame, maybe it's fortune, maybe it's just peace maybe it's a family but it's constantly seeking constantly moving towards that next thing that's going to quench this thirst and when we get there it's not quenched and we seek the next thing and it's unsustainable many times we will even run ourselves into the ground taking on too much taking on too many responsibilities for other people not taking care of ourselves, creating disease in our body, high levels of stress, and literal illness through the dis-ease in our bodies. At the end of the day, whether we're dealing with the unworthiness wound, the lack mentality, conditioning, programming, complex trauma, whatever you want to call it, it boils down to the way we define ourselves the value and worth that we have assigned to ourselves and the thing that we are seeking, however we label it. But in my experience, what I am seeing the evidence of in my own life, as well as for my clients is regardless of whatever label it is that we call the thing we are seeking, happiness, fulfillment, etc., It is all found in stillness that beneath happiness, is contentment that beneath the desire for wealth is the belief that we will be fulfilled we will be satisfied we will be content we'll be at peace we will be still and you can walk down from every label that you give it all the way back down to stillness every time and stillness is not silenced mind right it's not forceful it's not efforting it's peace that in the anxiety of the never ending pursuit of accomplishment or self actualization or progress or achievement or accolades, what we seek is to be at peace within ourselves, to be fulfilled and content, to be satisfied, to be satiated. It's all different ways of saying stillness, the turmoil, the anxiety, the inner chaos is created by the separation, the belief in lack, belief in separation, which creates the attachment to outcome and the belief we have to control it. So while this channel talks a lot about complex trauma and wounds and feeling not enough, but if you still resonate with that seeking, that searching for something more, if you have done all the things that they said you should do, 
you got the good job, you got the house, you got the family, you got the car, you got the stuff. Everybody else looks at you from the outside and says, they're keeping up with the Joneses, so they must be happy, but it doesn't cut it. There's still something more. This may be the video for you. So how do we get there? Stillness is our core. Stillness is our true nature, fulfillment, happiness, peace, joy. It is our core nature. It is our truest state of being. And that's why we seek it as if we were separated from our home. So if we know that that core is there and all these other layers of belief around ourselves, around the world, around others, the belief that we have to prove something, that we have to accomplish something, that we have to earn something, we have to prove something, we have to defend something. All of these beliefs are the layers around that core. And getting to your truth, removing all of these layers is easier than ever before. That if you resonate with the word complex trauma, great. If you resonate with programming or conditioning, great. If you resonate with not enoughness, unworthiness, lack mentality, a rose by any other name still smells as sweet. It doesn't matter. And the beautiful name, the beautiful answer to this is the name of the game. <laughs> That's what wanted to come through is the same that all of these things are healed through somatic healing therapies came into my awareness today by a beautiful lovely being that i'm so excited i'm going to be introducing to you in a very short while but she uses something called somatic experiencing next to emdr and brain spotting these are the therapies that i know of i do something called brain spotting but the key is for all of those is that the body is the key that we have, I think it was Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem from the level of thinking that it was created, right? Our consciousness, we think ourselves into all of these problems, the Maya, the illusion, the veil, the confusion, the layers around the core are all created by the mind and they are resolved through the body. They cannot be resolved through the mind. Talk therapy alone does not work. Talk therapy in conjunction with somatic therapy is the answer. You can get to your core. Every single person can. The beauty is the body is designed to heal. It knows exactly what it needs to do if it's given the proper attention and focus. If you get cut, you don't have to tell the body how to heal it. The body will handle that. We have a cognitive wound that also needs to be healed through somatic therapy because we're dealing with the limbic brain as well as the body that keeps the score for emotional blockages, traumas, etc. Everything we've talked about. I am a brain spotting facilitator. I prefer to call it trauma spotting through source tapping because there's also an energy healing element that I bring to the table that is beyond anything that I have experienced in traditional therapy settings. Otherwise, I will be introducing to you very shortly other people in this industry because it really does take a village and whether or not my therapy is right for you should not matter that we need to find the voice that you need to hear. And so I am looking forward to introducing more voices to this conversation and further assisting in creating the new Earth Construction Team. With that, it feels complete. I love you all so very much. Please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share. If you'd like to join the new Earth Construction Team community, there is a link below. Otherwise, if you want to just talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer free 30-minute sessions. Also a link below for that as well. Please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Namaste, my friends. I love you.